Salutations, my fellow deviants. Another month, another AI subscription renewal. I debated with myself for some time about which of my several new scripts to record first. I settled on this one because it lays the foundation of several others that would have made less sense without it. All right, that said, so let's get on with it. It's no great secret, for those not still sniffing the underside of the beach, that our media, pop culture, business sector, and really about every other facet of the 21st century world has become infested with people who seem to feel this incessant need to cram their ideological agendas into every nook, cranny, and crevice of our existence, often at the near total expense of their own reputations, legacies, stated missions, institutional profits, and the overall viability of their enterprises. This group, which right now consists predominantly of the woke left activist kind, though it has not always done, or an incarnation thereof, has always existed in our culture, going back to the very dawn of mass media. And the notion of a band of religious radicals working to subversively influence society in such ways as they see benefiting their version of Chandra-la is about as novel to the human world as those of death or taxes. I've discussed the psychological roots and nature of religion and ideology before, so I won't retread that old ground here, though I will link those videos below if you're curious. For now, I want to explore in more depth the cultural and artistic side of that coin, specifically in regards to activism in our media, everything from TV shows, comic books and movies to literature, advertising and sports. Nearly all sectors of the modern world seem to have been infiltrated, and nearly all facets of life in 2024 have been permeated by this latest brand of zealous activism. But why? What motivates all these industries to throw their creative integrity and fiduciary responsibilities to the wind? Now, obviously, there's the whole encyclopedic liturgy of legal, extra-legal, paralegal, bureaucratic, corporatocratic, and democratic initiatives we're all sick to death of hearing about. Brought to you courtesy of the dossier of usual suspects. George Soros, Larry Fink, Klaus Schwab, etc., to name but just the most well-documented few. However, in keeping with my channel's second rule, I won't go into what compels these wannabe demiurges to commit to the well-trodden path of self-righteous social alchemy, as there's nothing I feel I can add that the whole rest of the internet hasn't already beaten so far into the dirt that it's picking daisies directly out of Satan's back garden. And besides that, I've penned another script on the fallacies of authoritarianism, so stay tuned for that. Instead, my query for today will be this. What compels so many corporate media execs to pursue politics over profits? Well, as you can somewhat gather from the video's title, my thesis is there is an epidemic of corporate pinheads, glorified secretaries, and big-headed business majors who all desperately want to be seen as our generation's visionary leaders on par with last century's giants like Walt Disney, Tolkien, Stan Lee, and George Lucas. But like I said in my Four Types of Fantasy video, the originality and intelligence of the work is capped by the originality and intelligence of the artist who made it. I.e., in order to create something unique and interesting, you yourself have to be a unique and interesting person. The one problem for these vain corporate parasites in that regard is that they've never actually had an original thought before. So they simply latch themselves onto the shoulders of those so accomplished foregone titans and shamelessly stand atop the ruined castles of their betters while parading their heavily censored, abridged, abased, or outright refabricated laurels around as though they were their own undoctored pedigrees. But it's all right, though, they assure us. They purchased all those legendary estates completely legally, as though a defaced Mona Lisa would be more palatable with the government stamp of approval about it. You need look no further than the laundry list of executives who've supposed their own creative liberties on established franchises over the past several years to witness these faux creative vultures in action. Some of the biggest names include, but are by no means limited to, Marvel Studios head Kevin Feige, Lucasfilm president Kathleen Kennedy, Amazon Studios head of streaming Jennifer Salka, and even Disney's CEO Bob Iger, among many, many others. In each and every instance, their M.O. remains the same. Infiltrate an established legacy corporation slash studio slash project slash fandom, etc. Worm your way into the good graces of the big bosses or become one yourself. Hijack their existing properties. Oust all of the actual creatives and their veteran talent via mean girl style office politicking. Then transplant all of the true artistic inspiration therein for personal politics. Throw a liberal dose of ego felleting sauce on top for good measure and call anyone who points this out all of the worst slurs they can think of. 
or, more realistically, have trolled up from the inflamed bowels of social media. In short, one of the many reasons why our modern entertainment can't seem to be entertaining is because those helming the ship want so desperately to not only run their own personal colors up the mast, but to claim that they were the original shipwrights, that they're willing to bolt sets of inoperable Da Vinci-esque wings to its hull and tell everyone that it's a hitherto undocumented species of avian dinosaur. Never mind all the patent absurdities of the claim, the massive encumbrance wrought on the ship's structural integrity, or the colossal cost to its ability to actually fare the sea. And now that we know all of that, is it really so much of a wonder that these same valueless hacks are all scared out of their non-existent wits by the prospect of AI art? I've said this before, off the record, and I'll say it clearly again here, now. If you feel legitimately threatened by a machine, you're not as valuable as you think you are. All right there. I think that's about enough controversy for one afternoon. All links will be in the usual place, and I'll talk to you all next time. Adieu.